Enoch's tale begins in Genesis, a hidden narrative in chapter 5 verses 22 and 24, sparking curiosity for centuries. Is he an innocent boy turned Archangel Metatron or a potential prototype of a satanic demon? With just four verses in Genesis 5, the mystery deepens. Join us today as we explore the secrets of the Book of Enoch, understanding lost Bible verses and a story that has captivated hearts across the Jewish world and beyond. Enoch's tale doesn't end with Genesis. It echoes through tradition. Some suggest he guided the Israelites in the desert, becoming the angel of God. His name, treated with reverence, was employed in oaths and spells, often deemed too sacred to pronounce aloud. From obscurity in Genesis, Enoch rises to prominence, shaping human history. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, Enoch's remarkable journey is unveiled. He walked faithfully with God, and then mysteriously, he was no more because God took him away. This enigmatic disappearance marks the beginning of Enoch's extraordinary connection to abstract traditions related to thought, reading, writing, and calculation, all learned from angels during his sojourn in heaven. Returning to earth, Enoch becomes the world's first teacher, imparting wisdom to his son Methuselah. He initiated the foundations of a great priesthood, teaching the arts of reading, writing, and calculation. This detailed account is chronicled in the Book of Enoch. Enoch's role extends beyond teaching. He witnesses the wonders of creation, unravels the universe's secrets, and comprehends the intricate balance of rewards and punishments for the righteous and the wicked. His journey spans from the anticipation of the Messiah to being a prophet of history until the end of time. Interestingly, Enoch traces his lineage back to Cain, the infamous murderer. Despite Cain's dark deeds, Enoch becomes the founder of the first city bearing his name, shifting from a murderer's legacy to the beginning of material culture. Let's rewind to the early days of book writing. While the Bible was crafted in the writing halls of the Second Temple, there were other books like the Book of Enoch, penned in various places across Israel. These, however, didn't find their way into the Bible and were termed external books. External books, like the Book of Enoch, offer a unique perspective compared to the Bible. Despite being written by Jews who believed in God, there's a noticeable gap between the portrayal of God in these external books and the God depicted in the Bible. This divergence leads to two distinct ways of believing in the same God. Additionally, these external books paint a picture of a society immersed in folk tales, belief in demons and spirits, and reverence for the works of sorcerers. One standout example of these external books is the Book of Enoch. This collection of four essays, with the earliest dating back to around 270 BC, holds significance in both Jewish and Christian cultures. Dedicated to the character of Enoch, the text unfolds across different times and authors. Enoch's character is succinctly captured in the book of Genesis. Enoch lived 65 years, and he gave birth to Methuselah. Then, with a small leap, Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. This short quote sparks the imagination about where God took Enoch. And the answer lies in a journey to the unseen world beyond the dome of heaven, guided by angels. The Book of Enoch unravels mysteries hidden from human eyes. Authors of this ancient text delve into the heavenly realms, exploring the fate of souls beyond life on earth. They recount that angels took Enoch on a celestial journey with a singular purpose, unveiling the concealed truths residing above. Enoch's ascent to heaven brought forth revelations of a complex celestial order. He discovered that the heavens were intricately divided into seven realms, each presided over by a distinct heavenly mind, overseeing different cosmic matters. For instance, 200 angels in one heavenly abode orchestrated the regime of stars in the sky, manipulating the entire celestial system. In the course of his celestial exploration, Enoch observed the dwellings of spirits. He witnessed the origin from which these spirits embarked on their ethereal wanderings. Moreover, he beheld the majestic heights where the sun and moon emerged, casting their radiant illumination upon the earth. 
In the second heaven, a startling revelation awaited Enoch, a formidable prison. This cosmic jail confined men and angels who failed to uphold the commandments of God. It is a testament to divine justice, an ethereal correctional facility for those astray from the righteous path. The third heaven unfolds an enchanting spectacle, a celestial garden of unparalleled beauty. Two springs emerge, one flowing with honey and milk, while the other with oil and wine. This heavenly oasis boasts splendid trees, perpetually in bloom, releasing a delightful fragrance. Within this divine garden stand two significant trees. Within this divine garden stand two significant trees, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, infamous for the first couple's transgression, stands alongside the tree of life. The latter holds a promise for the righteous departed. Its fruit grants them the ability to rise from their ashes and return to life an eternal cycle transcending the boundaries between the seen and the unseen. The Book of Enoch paints a vivid picture of heaven and paradise, where a divine rest awaits the righteous. Angels of fervor sing unceasingly, eternal songs rejoicing in the coming of the righteous. They come with joy and wait, for good pleasure, riches without measure, to rest and age amid her light and eternal life. Hanabi 13, Ladla. In stark contrast, the third heaven harbors a dreadful place known as hell, an ominous abode designed for the souls of the wicked who sinned while alive. Unlike the heavenly river of milk and honey, hell's rivers flow with fire. Within its confines, angels wield heavy weapons, and sinners face torment in prisons. As Enoch ascends through the heavens, he encounters formidable scenes. In hell, he witnesses the bearers of the keys and the guardians of Hades standing like great serpents, their faces like unlit candles, and their eyes burning with fire. Their teeth are visible up to their breasts. Hanaf chapter 13 verse 3. Further, Enoch's celestial journey unveils massive pillars in the sky with heads reaching the heavens and feet firmly planted in the abyss. These colossal structures serve as the foundation supporting the heavens. Enoch encounters God, awaiting him on a great throne upon reaching the seventh heaven. The divine encounter is described vividly. I will come to that house, and it will be as hot as fire and as cold as ice. Fear will seize me, and trembling will hold me. Hanafi Chapter 13, verse 3 in the heavenly realms, a second house built with flames catches Enoch's gaze. The description is awe-inspiring. He was exalted in all the splendor and dignity and size, and I saw a high chair, its appearance like crystal. From under the chair, rivers of fiery fire came out, and the great honor sat on it. John chapter 1, verse 10. Enoch is summoned as God declares Enoch is approaching. In the book of Enoch, God is vividly described as a potent force. The Lord is like a fiery furnace, and His words a flame that comes out. I saw the face of the Lord as iron whitened by fire, which, when it rises, sends sparks and burns. His eyes shine like the sun's rays and terrify a man's eyes. I saw the measure of the stature of the Lord without measure and without image and without end. Han chapter 2 on 13, verses 5 and 9. A significant distinction between the Bible and the detailed external book of Enoch lies in its intense focus on the sights of the heavenly world. According to Enoch, life in heaven isn't a mere reflection of the limited and humble world witnessed by Earth's inhabitants. Instead, it is a vast and fantastical realm teeming with life and experiences beyond earthly comprehension. Within this heavenly expanse, God and angels coexist and stars take on the role of living creatures. The souls of the righteous and the wicked find their dwelling there, creating a realm rich with sounds, smells, colors, and sights unseen by earthly eyes. Enoch's literature is the earliest source of fundamental concepts integral to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. These concepts include the belief that heaven resides in the sky and that the souls of the righteous find their abode there. 
This foundational understanding, often mistakenly attributed solely to the Bible, finds its roots in the Book of Enoch. Contrary to popular belief, Enoch challenges the notion found in chapter 23 of the Book of Genesis. According to Enoch, paradise was a place on the surface of the earth, and the first man, Adam, derived his name from the material from which he was created. Enoch further challenges the prevailing concept of retribution found throughout the Bible. According to Enoch, the righteous and the wicked receive their rewards or punishments during their lifetimes. This perspective contrasts with biblical narratives like Adam and Eve, who faced expulsion from Eden while alive, without a return after death. The Book of Enoch introduces a groundbreaking idea, heaven and hell exist in the sky. This revelation provides unequivocal evidence that, by the 3rd century BC, the people of Israel believed in the soul's continued existence after the death of the body. The soul, as per Enoch, remains alive and connected to its former life and actions. Moreover, it also provides the concept that, after death, a righteous person gains access to heavenly paradise, reuniting with their soul in the last days. Conversely, an evil soul faces hell's fire until the end of time, an enduring concept embraced as a cornerstone in both Jewish and Christian faiths. So what do you think of the hidden secrets of the Book of Enoch? Comment below and subscribe for more.